To keep a 4,000 horsepower diesel engine cool requires a cooling system that can move large amounts of coolant at relatively low pressure. The components of the EMD cooling system include two centrifugal gear-driven pumps, one for each cylinder bank, a replaceable tube running the length of each air box, individual inlet and outlet tubes for each cylinder. Engine mounted after coolers on each side of the engine. Radiator sections on each side of the locomotive. Electric powered cooling fans. An oil cooler. And finally, a water expansion tank. During operation, the water pumps draw coolant from the oil cooler and water expansion tank. The coolant leaves the water pumps under pressure. This pressure forces coolant through the pipe in each air box, where each cylinder is connected by a curved tube, referred to as the lower water jumper. Coolant is forced in the bottom of the cylinder liner jacket, circulated around and up into the top of the liner where it flows through 12 drilled passages into the cylinder head. Circulation around the head removes heat from the exhaust valve seats, around the fuel injector well, and from the bottom of the cylinder head. Water continues flowing up to the top of the head where it is discharged through a brass elbow and into the engine discharge manifold located in the upper part of the crankcase. At the rear of the engine, coolant is also flowing through each after cooler to cool incoming air used for combustion. Water is discharged from the after coolers into the same engine discharge manifold. Here, coolant is forced through two Y-pipe strainers and finally into the engine radiators. Airflow and the exchange of heat is controlled by electric powered cooling fans and a row of shutters on each side of the locomotive. The fans and shutters are controlled by temperature switches located on a manifold near the air compressor. Coolant flows through the radiators and back into the expansion tank and the oil cooler for recirculation. A sight glass on the water expansion tank displays the level of coolant when the engine is running and when shut down. Pressure inside the expansion tank is controlled by a 7 PSI pressure cap mounted on a filler neck located on the side of the tank. A combination vent fill valve is used to maintain pressure inside the tank. This raises the boiling point of the coolant and prevents the water pumps from cavitating. Let's stop the program and discuss this part of the system with your instructor. There are few periodic maintenance requirements other than ensuring that the system is free of leaks that could contaminate the oil or lead to a loss of coolant that could cause a hot engine condition or a low water shutdown. Occasionally, it may be necessary to remove the strainer from the Y pipes and clean the screen. Each periodic inspection or if a lab code is reported, you are required to pressure test the cooling system. Prior to doing this test, it will be easier to find water leaks if a pint of fluorescent dye is added to the cooling system. Once the dye is in the system, you can use a black light to locate any water leaks. The leak will show up as a bright green spot against the dark background of oil. You should pay close attention to the area around the lower water jumper line for any leaking water or in the top deck around the water discharge elbow and the head to liner seal surface. 
repair any water leaks from the manifolds or piping at either end of the engine. Cooling water samples must also be taken when required to ensure that the specific concentration of corrosion inhibitor is maintained. Regular maintenance will help keep the cooling system on our EMD locomotives performing at peak efficiency.